Hello everyone, I welcome you all once again to my series of lecture that is Understanding Pharmaceutical Science with Dr. A. G. Hariharan. So today we are going to discuss about one of the important technique of enumeration of bacteria or microbial cell that is viable cell count technique. So this technique is uh, very important especially in the fermentation industry. So during the fermentation process uh, of uh, production of certain solvents like alcohol or organic acids or antibiotics or vitamins, the number of viable cells, so the viable means the living cells is very important because only the living cells can lead to the formation of the product. So the number of viable cells is become crucial for calculating the product formation. So this technique is uh, especially utilized in that industry for that purpose. So generally the measurement of microbial cell or microbial growth is done for calculating the growth rate of that particular microorganism or to determine the generation times. So for these two purpose, the enumeration of the microorganism is generally carried out. So there are basically three major techniques has been employed for the measurement of this microbial growth. So one is the cell count technique, second is the cell mass and third is the cell activity. So out of these three, the most commonly used is the measurement of the cell count. So this is generally done by two methods, one by a direct counting method, we call as a total count. That means it counts both the living cell as well as the non-living bacterial or any microbial cell. So this can be done by two ways, one with the help of a microscopy or with the help of an electronic particle counter such as Coulter counter or flow cytometer. So I have given a separate video lectures on this aspect that is the uh, uh, counting of uh, cells by direct method especially based on microscopy as well as the Coulter counter and flow cytometer. And the second one which is very important that is an indirect method of measuring the cell count that is the viable count technique. So that we elaborately discuss in this topic. That is uh, two techniques generally employed in this uh, viable counting. One is the plate count method and second is the membrane filter count method. And the second basic technique is the measurement of the cell mass. So this is also done by either a direct method or an, an indirect method. So in direct method, it is done by means of weighing or the, by the measurement of the cell nitrogen. In the indirect method is generally carried out with the help of certain equipments like spectrophotometer or nephloturbidometer. So you can see a new le video lecture on this topic also in coming days. And the third one is the measurement of the cell activity. So it is an indirect method generally determines the biochemical activity of the cell based on number of cells can be calculated. So in this video we are totally dedicated of calculating the viable count. So the viable count the word itself means that the viable means the living cells. So since it is called as an indirect method because uh, uh, it is indirect method because only the cells which is divided after dividing only we will calculate it based on that we will tell this number of cells was present in the sample. So this viable count is generally done by two ways one is by the plate count method and second is the membrane filter count method. So both the technique is basically based on the simple terminology called as colony forming unit we call a CFU. So what is mean by a colony first we have to understand. A colony means a single microbial cells whether a bacterial or fungal cell will divide and divide and divide and finally it forms a visible cluster of my culture. So this visible cluster of microorganism we generally termed as a colony having an unique particular characteristic growth pattern. So each bacterial colony generally arise from an individual bacterial cell. So this is called a CFU. Only a viable cells can form a colony because a viable cell only can divide and form a visible colony whereas the non-living cell doesn't form the colony. So this technique, the viable count technique is we call as indirect method because a viable cell will divide and form a colony. We measure the colony, number of colonies based on that we tell number of viable cells was present in the sample. So that's why it is called as an indirect method. 
So there are two methods has been generally employed. One is the plate count method and second is the membrane filtration method. So the first one we understand the plate count method. So it is simply what we are doing is the sample is plated on an agar surface by some of other techniques and the number of viable cells present in the sample is counted. So the viable cells can only divide and forms a colony. So the viable cell only has the ability to reproduce. So based on the number of colonies, we will calculate number of viable cell. So this plate counting technique is generally done by two ways. One is a spread plate technique and second is the pour plate technique. So these two common techniques has been employed for counting the number of viable cells. And I have already given a separate lecture on the spread plate and pour plate technique in my video lectures. You can weave it how it is performed. So for simple illustration, how the viable counting by this plate technique is carried out is that first we will take a sample and the sample is sufficiently diluted so that it forms an individual colonies. Otherwise, what happens is. Uh, in the agar surface, we will use a concentrated sample means the colony will form together. So the counting will become difficult. So the first step is that the sample is sufficiently diluted so that it produces individual colonies on a solid agar surface. So these colonies can be seen distinctly so that each single bacteria can easily develop into a single distinct colony. So this is how it is done both the spread plate and streak plate technique. First, the sample is diluted sufficiently as you can see from the picture. So this is the sample dilution. It is generally done in 1 is to 10 to the power dilution. Then there are two techniques is formed. One is the pour plate technique. What we will do is we transfer 1 ml to a molten agar. So the agar is sterilized, nutrient agar is sterilized. Then it is cooled once it reaches a temperature around 45 degrees Celsius. So in this 45 degrees Celsius, the added sample microorganism won't die and the agar is not get solidified. Then it is poured into a sterile petri dish. So this is called as a pour plate technique. So whereas in the second technique, spread plate technique, what we will do is we have a sterile agar petri dish. In that we will directly transfer 0.1 ml of a sample and it is spreaded with the help of a uh, specialized L-shaped glass rod. Then it is incubated. So after incubation we can see the individual colonies and this individual colonies is counted with the help of a colony counter. So each individual colonies is separately counted and based on the number of uh, colonies the number of bacterial cell which was present in the sample is calculated. So this is a very simple technique and the calculation is basically based on two things. That is the number of colonies formed and the dilution of the original sample. So for example, you can take, so if, for example, if you see 150 colonies has been formed with a dilution of 1 into 10 to the power 6 means the number of uh, viable cells which was present in the sample is 1.5 into 10 to the power 8 cells per ml. So based on this we can calculate the viable cells indirectly. But still this method has many limitation. So one major limitation is that the agar, nutrient agar what we are using should provide sufficient nutrients and favor the growth condition of that particular bacteria. So if the nutrient is not enough means the bacteria even though it was viable it doesn't grow in that particular media. And second thing is that the viable cells with that particular growth condition should grow. But sometimes certain viable cells doesn't have co co uh, competitive enough to form a colony. And this can lead to certain confusion during the counting techniques also. And the third case is that sometimes the cells get aggregated. So one colony can be overlapped over another colony. So what happened is that we can see as a single colony, which causes a reduction in the colony counting. In turn, it causes a drastic reduction in the uh, viable cell count present in the sample. So these are certain limitations. It should be uh, carefully overcome by an appropriate technique. 
and the second one is the membrane filter technique or membrane filter colony count technique we can also sell that so the membrane filtration technique is the most frequently used technique once we have a large volume of sample so it is done with the help of a specialized membrane filter so nowadays yeah, appropriate pore size membrane filters are available for this technique so with the different pore size we can use it so how it is performed is that it is performed a stepwise manner first the membrane filtration is carried out so we take a membrane filter which is having an appropriate pore size for example take a black polycarbonate membrane with a pore size of 0.45 micron where the our concerned microorganism can get entrapped so we fit that filter into the filtration assembly a sterile filtration assembly then we will add the sample at the top so by because of gravity or because of the application of vacuum the filtration will happen so the liquid passes through it whereas the bacterial or the any microbial cells will entrap in the filter so then this filter is placed in, on an agar surface appropriate medium containing agar surface then it is incubated so after incubation what happens it grows into colonies then it can be counted so i have illustrated this technique so first we will keep a membrane of an appropriate pore size into the sterilized filtration assembly then we will add the sample so it filters due to gravity or by the help of a vacuum then the filter is removed then placed in an appropriate medium containing agar surface then it is incubated at an appropriate growth condition so it develops into your colonies and these colonies can be counted individually so it is little bit time consuming process so it can be reduced by means of certain staining techniques so the bacteria can be stained with the help of certain fluorescence dyes such as acridine orange or the dna can be stained with the help of a dappy so this staining will give an more illustrative way of counting the bacteria so the counting of bacteria uh, through a formation of colonies is done against the black background otherwise it can be done with the help of a epifluorescence microscope so thereby we can get an accurate counting of the bacteria by this technique i think this technique is very useful for you for understanding how the viable count has been calculated so thank you very much for patiently listening this video lecture so continuously watch my video lectures on these topics of microbiology also I have a separate playlist especially for the immunology bacterial genetics as well as uh, uh, biotechnology so thank you very much